Thank you. So let's go to the stock exchange where our other studio there, our annex, where we have a guest waiting for us, Mr. Femi Akintunde, who is the chief executive of Alpha Mid uh, Facilities or Alpha Mid Group uh, specifically. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, sir. Thank you very much, Temporo. Right. Uh, I should say first, uh, congratulations on your uh, recognition by the London Stock Exchange. What does that tell us about facilities management in Nigeria? You are one of the few, uh, 300, over 300 companies are recognized across uh, Af Africa. Yeah, thank you very much, Tempu. Um, actually, there were 360 companies uh, for Africa, uh, about 1,000 in Europe. For Africa, out of the 360, I must say that 97 actually came from Nigeria, uh, which has a lot of implications for, for us. First, for Alphamid, it's both a challenge and a motivation. A motivation in the sense that uh, we're happy that what we're doing is being recognized uh, as a global best practice and um, is really impacting uh, the, 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 the community uh, where we're operating from. It's a challenge in the sense that once we begin to uh, be alighted as a key player at that level, it calls for more dedication and more uh, commitment to global best practice standards. For Nigeria, it also means that despite all the challenges that we have, we could identify 97 good companies that are emerging because uh, the benchmark was for companies that are operating below $1 billion dollar um, revenue and uh, it means I mean, we're not we're not really talking of the big players the, like the dying boutiques of this world who are already there anyway so these are emerging companies that um, london stock exchange has identified and uh, for nigeria it also means that we actually have uh, we can see uh, some silver lining in the cloud that things are not that bad and we can showcase the best of our own uh, to the international uh, market for international investors, what this also means, because we've started receiving a lot of inquiries, both from within Africa and outside Africa, uh, where people naturally and generally believe that Africa is a black box. You don't understand anything about how things work there. Uh, part of the requirements for this election is actually the transparency of your corporate governance structure and also the accounting uh, standards that you, you, you comply with. We are IFRS, uh, IFRS uh, compliant and uh, one of the global four EY uh, auditor account. So that was quite um, revealing to them that right. uh, companies at our level could actually be operating at that kind of standard and hold ourselves responsible. So international investors are beginning to see that there is actually opportunity to invest in good companies in Nigeria. And for the capital market, we feel we should also be able to celebrate our own and take a cue from this development to actually identify those emerging businesses that could be said to be uh, global SMEs, because that's what I would, uh, I would call, call them, uh, and support us, because it's really, really tough doing business in this kind of environment. And um, I mean, for, to achieve the same level of results, you need to put in almost 10 times the same effort uh, compared to other uh, climbs where things are a bit more standard and um, and uh, supportive. So uh, we're looking forward to seeing more of uh, Nigerian investors pay more attention, the capital market pay more attention to this group of companies and support them to also boost the capital market uh, opportunities in Nigeria. Okay, so hopefully this will at least at least bring 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 in more of uh, uh, foreign direct uh, investment and of course some kind of FPIs to some country uh, companies here. Again, for those uh, that are looking for some private capital financing, uh, then this provides an opportunity for some of those recognized companies. Uh, thank you for your thoughts being shared there, sir. So let's look at uh, the fact that infrastructure remains critical uh, to Nigeria. Um, of course, this, we know that the federal government, uh, President Muhammadu Buhari specifically. Uh, has now signed the Executive Order 007 into law, and that is expected to help complete uh, some of the major roads across the Federation. And we also know that there was an Executive Order uh, 005, and that was to help a lot of the uh, local players, engineers like you, to now uh, uh, participate more in roads or uh, construction works in Nigeria. Uh, let us square this off. Z uh, Executive Order 005, 
and Executive Order 007. What does this bring to the mind of uh, current, uh, that members of current engineers like you in your field? Um, let's start first of all from the, from the base. Um, it's projected that the global economy will experience about $20 trillion investment into infrastructure uh, development this year. That accounts for about 25% of global GDP. Um, from what we've seen of 2019 budget, Nigeria is planning to spend about $6.8 billion, uh, which is equivalent to 1.66%. Uh, you will agree with me that that is extremely very, very low. And infrastructure is a key driver of economic growth. Uh, it helps competitiveness, it helps productivity of people, it helps companies to perform more efficiently. And if we're not putting more into that space, we should not expect to see dramatic change in the living standard of uh, an average Nigerian. So starting from there, uh, let's now drill down to the executive of the 12. Yes, it's a good uh, decision, and one thing that it would definitely do is that it helps to accelerate the uh, investment in uh, infrastructure, particularly in the area of road construction, uh, because what that does is that it doesn't take the liability that gov the, the, the companies should, uh, uh, will um, incur away in terms of what this will be done, but it's a form of um, a tax credit which you can use to invest in roads. So that takes away from the bureaucracy of government approval, budget, fund allocation, and all what have you. So government companies can directly take, take cash credit, uh, tax credit, and invest it in road infrastructure. Um, so that will definitely improve things. And a number of companies have been identified for the pilot phase, uh, the Lafarge of this world, the Dangote, the Unilever, and co. But my own concern more is that road construction and uh, road infrastructure development is good. But if you take it that we are a nation of about 180, 190 million people, we need to begin to pay more attention to mass transport system. The road infrastructure that we have currently can only take so much and can only take so many people at a time. When you invest in road transport, I mean in mass transport, like the railways, uh, the rail tracks and stuff like that, you move more people, you move more goods from one point to the other. So I would say that it's a good opportunity to accelerate the development of infrastructure in the area of route, but yeah. please let us also focus more on uh, other uh, on mass transport uh, system. So Mr. Akitunde, the next question will be that... Um, what is the capacity of local players in this regard? Because over the years, we have had records of uh, collapsed bridges, uh, collapsed buildings, and more. Um, thank you. I, I think we need to really, really be uh, brutally honest with ourselves uh, at this point. The... And I'm an engineer, you, I believe you, you know that as well. And I'm passionate about developing local capacity for development. But we need to ask ourselves, how much effort and investment have we put into the development of this local capacity over time? What you don't have, you cannot give. I think that we have not been deliberate enough. We have not been uh, focused enough to grow capacity in this area. When you talk about infrastructure um, development, there are two dimensions of it. You have the provision, and then you have the management of it, the maintenance, operation and maintenance. Um, the provision is definitely capital intensive. We'll need to continue, we'll continue to uh, uh, rely on some uh, foreign investment in that direction. And government is looking at different sources of uh, uh, funding uh, of, of capital to fund this Part. Hmm. So, but if anybody brings capital into your country to invest in your infrastructure, definitely they would demand certain degree of management control uh, to ensure that their investment will be repaid back. And if Nigeria engineers have to play a critical role in this area, I think we should start from being a key 
player in the area of the provisioning, the designing, the construction, and see the educational system that we have. We should focus more on the development of STEM, that is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. We see that the curriculum of most of our higher institutions are not really, really uh, being devoted to the development of capacity in this area. We have to start from that grassroots because whatever we miss now is going to impact us big time in the future. And I think, secondly, government should also make conscious effort to integrate Nigerian engineers with these processes. It's right. good enough for somebody to bring money to this country, but hey, we, 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 it's still our country. We must create a position okay. for our people to play in it and allow the local players to also contribute to their quota to the development because that is the capacity that we can retain on the long term. Okay. Okay, okay, Mr. Kinton. Thank you so very much for your thoughts. Unfortunately, we don't really have much time to trash out these issues very well because there are other issues around, around these financing issues and, of course, a whole lot of things to actually discuss. We should engage you more on the program uh, on this particular discussion. Thank you so much for your thoughts. Now, after the break, we will come back to talk about the uh, 150 billion naira that the debt management office offered yesterday and, of course, an insight into the current trading day at the equities market.